Hello and welcome to ET Garage. Today's video is going to be about spark plug thread repair. I have a uh, freshly rebuilt 385 of all things. So uh, let me move the camera around and uh, I'll show you what's going on and how conveniently it's located. All right, here we are on the passenger side. And this is the convenient location that it happened, which is the right down there in the number three spark plug location. In case you're not familiar with small block Chevys, uh, you have uh, spark plug two, spark plug four, spark plug six, spark plug eight on the passenger side. One, three, five, and seven is on the driver's side. But anyway, number three, which is the second spark plug over, buried deep in there, is the one that's stripped. And I was taking the spark plugs out. I'm doing uh, some data logging and tuning the new build. And I was checking the spark plugs and taking the spark plug out. And this is the first time this has ever happened to me. This is the first time I've ever stripped a spark plug in my 62 years. I've stripped other rusty nuts and bolts and stuff like that. I've never done a spark stripped a spark plug. I have to say this is the first time this ever happened to me. And I'm backing it out. And I can feel it tighten up. It tightened up quite a bit. And it, basically what it did is it took the threads with it when I was backing it out. Yes, I did have lubrication on the threads and all that good stuff. Uh, but I guess after these heads, even though they're freshly rebuilt, actually have something like 243,000 miles on them. Well over that, 244 maybe uh, as of this video. And uh, I guess after all the 30 years and over 30 years and all those miles, it decided to, it was time to give up the ghost. Of course, it did it right after I freshened the motor up and uh, well, the engine was in. So, go figure. Anyway, I'll uh, show you what I'm going to use and I'll show you how I got to it. So, hold tight. Alrighty. Uh, this is the repair kit I use. It's called a uh, plug saver, fix a thread, and uh, it comes. I'm, I guess they come in different sizes. Mine is for an M14125, which is the size spark plugs that I use. And uh, a little confusing because you're only these come with a special size drill bit, like the helicoils do. This one does. This one instead comes with a uh, combination drill tap so basically you're threading this into the original spark plug hole that and then this part here this taper part does the cutting as you screw it in and uh, this part here taps it for the outside of the inserts now it comes with three different inserts a uh, three-quarter inch to fit this spark plug which I already have in the car repaired I'll show you that shortly and these two other sizes, I'm not sure what the sizes are. And it comes with this punch. And what you do is put a lot of grease on here. Go in a little bit at a time, back it off, clean the chips, the grease off, put new grease on it, do it again. Try and do the best you can to keep chips out of the combustion chamber. If you do get chips in there, like uh, especially on a aluminum head, they're going to be very difficult to get out. You can blow them, you can use a vacuum. I've tried everything. i got a few chips in there. I'm just going to have to... I'll try blowing them out again. I tried sticking a uh, hose in there hooked up to the vacuum, try and suck them out that way. Uh, I'll just have to run them out the exhaust. Another thing you want to do is make sure both valves, the intake and exhaust, are in the closed position and bring your piston to, I'd say, about half inch to an inch from top dead center. Uh, what happens is if you screw this in with the intake down, it will hit the intake and you could end up damaging the intake valve. Mine was down when I screwed it in. Hopefully I didn't damage it. I did butt up against it and I stopped. I felt it was something not going on and I stopped. So back it off. I uh, went in there with a uh, with one of those uh, cameras and uh, and looked in there and uh, made sure everything was all right now no matter how careful I was keep the chips out with the grease I still ended up with some chips in there I was able to blow most of them out I tried using a shop vac and sticking a hose in there hooked to a shop vac I still got some in there I gotta try and get out if they can't get them out they're just gonna have to hope they get blown out the exhaust so uh, be very careful with that uh, 
It also comes with this punch. And what you do is after you get threads done, you clean it real good. The threads have to be cleaned real good on the head and on the inserts. And you apply Loctite, you screw this in. You could either use a spark plug by screwing a spark plug in, or you can just screw this in like this. And then you use this to screw that into the threads you just made with that. Now on mine, I screwed this in as far as I, got, I could go, and you can see the knurls on the end. Those gotta be on the outside. And, and then once you get them screwed in as far as you can get it and lock that on there you take this punch push that in there and you hammer that and it expands that so it won't come back out and of course you have the loctite on there that takes about 24 the loctite i use takes about 24 hours to set up so keep that in mind when you're doing this uh as long as you use this expanding tool you might be able to get away doing it right away you'd have to, you're on your own there uh but the Loctite also acts as a sealer, a thread sealer, so keep that in mind. You don't want combustion gases getting around those threads. I did have to, on when I did mine, it stuck out just a little bit past the mating surface where this gasket seats. So I ended up going in there with this tool and just going in and in and using this tapered cutting part to just cut it down until it was flush with the mating surface and it worked. So. Uh, let me take you over to the car. I got everything apart and I got the thread insert in. I'll show you how I got uh, was able to reach it and uh, how I got it in there. And then I'm going to get this thing all back together and uh, we'll wrap the video up. Okay, as you can see, uh, this is my C4 Corvette. If anyone's not familiar with it, uh, I just refreshed this motor about 500 miles ago. And uh, I was taking out the plugs to get a plug reading and some other stuff I'll go into another video but anyway if you're not familiar with the C4 Corvette uh, the motor is actually offset to the passenger side making this side a lot tighter of course they got the AC pump there and all this other stuff and uh, if you're just changing spark plugs the only thing you need to remove is this one bracket and that usually gives you room to get in there and uh, of course I needed to uh, repair the thread and to do that I had to remove the uh, inner fender. The inner fender on a C4 Corvette is in actually three pieces on the front, both sides. Uh, plus this uh, rubber gasket, you got to remove that first. Of course, first you got to jack the car up, take the wheel off, take uh, the center inner fender off, and then take the inner fender, rear inner fender off, front inner fender. And if you take these off, First thing you want to do is remove that bolt on the bottom. Uh, because then you're going to be, get all these other bolts off and wonder why this thing doesn't come off and you're going to end up sitting there yanking on it, yanking on it, and probably end up breaking it. So do that bolt first. Uh, these are not that difficult to take off, believe it or not. There's a uh, center one, there's one, two, three, four, five, five 10 millimeter bolts, and then there will, you'll see these depending on your car, condition of your car, like mine are missing these bolts here, but these uh, basically hold the AC line on. And mine only had originally two, I don't even bother to put them in anymore. And then the other fender basically has one, two, three, four, five, 10 millimeter bolts. And then on mine, it has these that are uh, torque bolts, torque bit bolts. Uh, may be different on your C4. I've seen them different. Uh, but that's how it is on mine. I'll move the camera and uh, I'll, I'll show you what... Uh, once all this is off, it's a straight shot in there. So I'll uh, move the camera and get some better lighting and show you uh, exactly what I did. Okay, here we are looking at the uh, spark plug hole there. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to zoom in there and, and get a, a closer up shot. But uh, fortunately it was not the number six or eight spark plug, which is further in towards the uh, left of your screen. If it was, that would have been a lot more difficult to get to. And if I couldn't get to it, then I'd have to disassemble the upper part of the motor and take that cylinder head off. And that would have been a real pain. Uh, fortunately I was able to get in there 
and uh, it's actually a pretty straight shot. Let me see here if I can get the tool in there for you. Yeah, there it is on the end of the socket and the uh, wrench. I'm doing a voiceover, by the way. There it is. You can see how straight shot in. That that made it so much easier. Uh, it was worth taking the time to take that wheel off and the t wheel and tire off and those panels. The panels actually don't take that long to get off. Uh, especially if you have like an electric rock ratchet and if you've done it before of course that makes it a lot quicker too. It's uh, it even even if it, it took a couple of hours extra it would have been worth it just to make it easier to do that job right because you don't want to screw that job up. And uh, one thing I had to do like I said earlier is I had to go in there with the tool and shave that end that was sticking out a little bit. Uh, unfortunately that worked out well. Now we're going to get things back together and uh, I'll wrap up the video. Okay, uh, I guess that's a wrap. Uh, I'll go ahead and start it up. Do some things that I wanted to get done other than repair that spark plug. Oh, that's the first time in 62 years that I've had that happen. So, uh, let me uh, just end it here and uh, hopefully everybody has a better day than I had and God bless.